For more than a year, Utah has not been testing medical marijuana for several pathogens. And this morning, Robert Gerke is with us via Zoom. Robert, good morning. Okay, so the big question, why did Utah stop this specific testing? Hey, good morning, guys. Yeah, so uh, last year in the middle of the pandemic, we had all these supply chain disruptions that everybody knew about. It seemed like it was messing everything up. Uh, and and it, these, these, some of the testing supplies that they need to do these tests were also interrupted. And so back in April of 2021, uh, the state suspended testing for things like E. coli, Salmonella, Aspergillus, which is a group of molds that they would test for um, until they got these supplies in. And now we're 13 months later, uh, you know, the, the, a couple labs I talked to said that they, they don't have problems getting these supplies, but the state has still suspended this testing. And, you know, the reason we do these tests is because these can make people sick, particularly people who are immunocompromised. And when you think about people who are using in the, in the medical marijuana program, we're talking about people with cancer, we're talking about people with HIV or AIDS, we're talking about people with a whole host of, of, of illnesses that can cause problems with their immune system or the treatments for those illnesses can cause problems with the immune system. And so it seems like it's one of these things that we kind of got to get back going again. The state uh, said they got a shipment of these supplies in that they need their, their tips on the little uh, pipettes that you use to draw out the solutions. Um, they said they got those in, they hope to resume testing in about two months, but for the time being, you know, there's really no way for the state to know if it has you know, some some mild, you know, bacteria in it that's not going to hurt anybody or if it has these pathogens in it, which have been shown to be uh, pretty problematic in some instances. Well, a lot of people may not see a problem with this because they think, well, you're just going to burn it anyway. You know, so what's the big deal? So so in Utah, the law prohibits you from burning it. You can vaporize it, but that, that doesn't necessarily get it hot enough to, to uh, kill all the bacteria. And these things are pretty hardy. I mean, even there are documented instances in the literature um, where even people who are smoking it uh, end up getting sick from this and even dying from this in some instances in extreme cases. I mean, it can cause these these pathogens can do anything from cause some, you know, stomach issues when you're talking about E. coli, uh, you know, cramping diarrhea, stuff like that, all the way to this aspergillus, which can get into your blood system and, and can, it can be lethal. I mean, it can cause uh, sort of an allergic reaction. You can get fungal balls is what they call them in your lungs that uh, make it really hard to breathe. And if it gets into your blood system, it can be uh, really problematic and even lethal. Um, you know, the, the, the nature of it is, is this marijuana, this cannabis plant is kind of a sticky plant. It's got a lot growing on it. In, in even the best circumstances, um, most of it's harmless. You know, almost all of it's harmless. And the, test, the state is doing tests to make sure that there's not certain levels of these uh, of, of anything growing on there. But you know, they don't really know if it, if it's certain levels of bacteria, as I mentioned, or certain levels of these pathogens. And so um, it can it can be sort of a buyer beware is sort of what the state ended up telling me at the end of the day. It's like 